It's the last episode of Hashtag That. Summing up, we're discussing what you can expect for President Judy Olean's inauguration. Plus, see what student events the programming board held this weekend to help students enjoy their weekend. From Hamden to Hollywood, we are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. I literally didn't say... From Hamden to Hollywood, we are your source for entertainment news. Thanks for tuning in to the last episode of the semester. I'm Paige Meyer. And I'm Kayla Heavey. Quinnipiac University will inaugurate Dr. Judy Olean as the university's ninth president on Wednesday, May 1st. The university is encouraging everyone to celebrate this important moment in Quinnipiac's history. Throughout the week, there will be a series of events to celebrate this special occasion. From a lineup of campus TEDx talks to faculty talks, theater and music performances, the university encourages all students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends to celebrate this leadership transition. And this past Tuesday, Real Life for Life held their Luminaria ceremony, an event that remembers and honors those battling cancers, loved ones, and all survivors. There was a Luminaria bag decorating event fo followed by cancer survivors speaking to tell their stories. The ceremonies began after. Everyone participating was encouraged to light up the community and honor every life touched by cancer. Earth Day took place on the 22nd, and Quinnipiac students celebrated all throughout last week. Hashtag's AP AJ Roberts is in the Student for Environmental Action Club and has a recap for us. Let's check it out. Nug Night 2.0 took place this past Saturday. Over 3,000 chicken nuggets were given out to those in attendance. Based off of student feedback, there were nuggets from McDonald's, Wendy's, and even Chick-fil-A. Sounds like an event I want to be at. There were also French fries and, of course, some gluten-free options. Students enjoyed the night with nuggets, pub-style trivia, and prizes. Friday night, Mega Bingo took place in the Burt Con Gymnasium. What is Mega Bingo, one may ask? Simply just bingo, but better. Better prizes and food, that is. Hundreds of students filled the gym to enjoy some free food, some bingo, and some amazing prizes. When we come back, we're bringing back hashtag music gurus, two of my favorites, for a nice Coachella review. Plus, Amanda Barron is coming to us live with trending topics. Don't go anywhere.
Another dynamic duo is taking over Hashtag That tonight. Back in Better Than Ever, we have Ryan Ansel and Colina here with a full Coachella music review. Between Ariana Grande and Kanye West, Coachella was definitely a place I wanted to be at. Ryan, Cullen, take it away. All right, well, it's so good to be here. I speak on behalf of both of us. Me, Cullen Ronan, and Ryan <laughs> here. Um, but when life gives you lemons, just hope it's not when you're on stage in front of a crowd of 250,000 hype beats and Instagram influencers. Unfortunately for Ariana Grande, that's oh exactly what happened when she got pelted with everyone's favorite citrus fruit during her 2019 Coachella set. During her performance of Right There slash Break Your Heart Back, she took a fastball to the chest from one particularly sour fan in the audience. The pop star played it off like a true professional reacting with a playful, one of y'all just threw a lemon at me, directed at the quarter million in attendance. Conspiracy theorists have been quick to jump on this with all point fingers pointing at Beyonce. Why, you may ask? Well, Beyonce was reportedly paid $4 million for her performance while Ariana Grande was paid $8 million. A little jealousy, maybe? As fun as this conceived rivalry may be, it was also reported Beyonce got paid $4 million per performance. So in the end, both megastars would have made the exact same for their sets. But all beef aside, it's safe to say it was certainly a lemon that stole the show this Coachella. Yeah, and as you know by now, Coachella, Coachella was earlier this month, and Cullen and I just wanted to recap it for you guys. So I'm really glad that I got to talk about Yeezus in my last segment on the show. Kanye brought his Sunday service to the festival. It's a weekly worship series that takes place in a secret location in the hills. So it made sense that Kanye performed this service on an actual hill. This Easter performance was actually pretty legendary. Kanye included his ensemble of amazing gospel singers, all dressed in soft pink and purple attire. They performed the classics and even previewed some new music like the song Water, which may or may not be on Yandi. And also speaking of Yandi, Kanye fans were wondering if he'd make an announcement about it on Easter at Coachella. It, I thought it would have made sense. I wouldn't say he let us down, but he held his tongue on this one, which seems to be something he's been working on. He's been pretty uh, quiet lately, staying focused on his Sunday services and hopefully finishing up his, his project he promised us last November. Will Yandi come out before the summer? Is it still even coming? Also, is Kanye starting a cult? <laughs> I'm praying to Jesus every day for the answers. Now, this band might be a little less notable than Yeezus himself, but Chon, one of Progressive Rock's brightest new faces with their punchy and intricate instrumental jams, added a fifth member for their 2019 Coachella performance. To the shock of just about everyone in attendance, jazz superstar and modern day meme Kenny G broke out his sexy sax riffs and joined the band in their performance. Gracing the Coachella stage is a big enough performance for any band, but having a jazz icon hop on stage with you is even more impressive. How this collaboration came together, nobody really knows, but at the time, absolutely no one is complaining either. Yeah, and finally, Coachella hosted many amazing artists. There was Radiohead, Lady Gaga, Kendrick, Father John Misty, but the action wasn't just happening on stage, but in the crowds as well. According to the website Herp Alert, which is a treatment website for STDs, there was a massive spike in herpes during the two Coachella weekends. Normally, the website sees around 20 cases a day in Southern California, but for the first two days at Coachella, there were about 250 requests for STD medication. That's pretty significant. But hey, it's not a huge surprise to me that this all happened with all the people, music, and whatnot in one place, an outbreak of something of this kind is bound to happen. I think it's actually a good thing that this outbreak trended so much on the internet. It just goes to show that you have to be careful when you hit music festivals. So be careful this summer at Governor's Ball and Boston Calling, Boston Calling to all of our East Coast viewers. I just want to shout out Paige, Maggie, Kayla, and the rest of Q30 for having me a part of this awesome show since I've been here at QU2. Uh, I told Maggie on May weekend that I'll come back and do another trending topic, topic song with her. So hashtag, that's all you got from us. Thanks, guys. I didn't write anything as intricate as that, but <laughs> I mirror all those sentiments. Back to you guys. Boys, it's so good to have you back on the show. We love you. Always. And Jensen and Rico attempted to break a world record this afternoon. Did they do it? Let's find out. Hey, hashtag, love we're back here with another world record. I'm Jensen. And I'm Rico. And today, we're going to be trying to beat a world record for how many lemons you can catch in 30 seconds while blindfolded. But we don't have any lemons, so instead, we're using oranges. Let's see how this goes. Go 
one. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Obviously, I'm far more superior, and the oranges can tell. No, 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 no. I can just throw better than you. Um, the high score was 29. I'm gonna ignore his comment because I was better, but it's fine. You barely hit me. Okay, you're just, you didn't catch them. She didn't do much better though. Wait, I caught one, you caught two. I caught three, if I recall. Okay, maybe it was three. We both failed, and that's all that matters. I'm a winner. Back to you guys. <laughs> Taylor Swift released a brand new single. The final Avengers movie premiered. And another elaborate Kardashian baby shower. Amanda Barron is here to fill us in with this week's trending topics. Amanda? Thanks, Amanda. When we come back, Alex Tagliari, Alex Tagliari is here to fill us in on this week's Hollywood News. Four years and you still can't say the last name. I'm just used to saying hey, I'm tags. not the best with last names <laughs> either, so it's all right. Stay with us. We'll see you soon.
between William cheating on Kate, the end of a Woodstock celebration, and our final show with Q30, a lot of good things are coming to an end. Our favorite Alex Taglieri is here to fill us in. Alex. Thanks, guys. First up is a shocking story from across the pond, as reports say that Prince William has cheated on his wife, Kate Middleton. In Touch Magazine was the first to report the rumors that Prince William had an affair while his wife was pregnant with their third child. Now, several publications have been given legal warnings for writing about the scandal. Today is their eight-year wedding anniversary, but the occasion seems to be overshadowed by the cheating rumors. So what do you guys think? Is it just a rumor, or do you think that Prince William actually cheated on Kate Middleton? I just, like, I don't want to believe it's true. Yeah. I don't. If there hasn't been an actual credible source, mm -hmm. and people are saying, like, oh, be careful what you write, then it's like, I feel like it's still kind of up in the air, and I just want to hope that's not true after eight years. I know. After eight, and it's funny today, the anniversary falls, of course. I know. We're talking about it. I read something on Twitter that he cheated on her with one of her best friends. Mm -hmm. no. Did you see that, Alex? Yep, and apparently... Um, Kate confronted him about it, and he denied the rumors, but they're still trying to break ties with that friend, so. Wow. Yeah, I wonder suspicious. how it will play out. I know. I'm, I'm curious, but I don't mm. want to believe it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so in other disappointing news, Woodstock 50 has officially been canceled. The event was supposed to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Woodstock, but concerns about the capacity of the space as well as site reg readiness led to its cancellation. The lineup was stacked with The Killers, Jay-Z, and Imagine Dragons listed as headliners. Other performers included Miley Cyrus, Chance the Rapper, and Halsey, as well as musicians from the original 1969 Woodstock. Luckily, no tickets had been sold for the event yet, but what do you guys think about this news? I was shocked it was canceled, especially on the 50th uh, celebration, I guess I you can say, just because I thought if as number 50, it'd be bigger than ever. Exactly, and I feel yeah. like by this point, like, come on, find a venue that's gonna mm -hmm. hold everyone, especially when you have that kind of a lineup. Yeah. Like, you know that there's gonna be so many different people, and I'm kind of shocked that they couldn't find, like, the venue wasn't right, and exactly. there wasn't enough space. And, and so that, much like, planning goes into this. It's gotta be yeah. years in advance that something caused this cancellation. It's crazy to me. Yeah, I, I would have loved to see Miley Cyrus perform. Right, that would have been so good. That's the one that stood good. out to me on the line. No, me too, I haven't seen her since, like the Hannah Montana days. Yeah. So I almost want to see her perform now. But like, that's crazy. I wonder if they'll do something later down the road, maybe like yeah, maybe a 50 a 50 first. first. Yeah. Exactly. We can just like push it back a year. We'll plan better. Yeah, plan and better. Have the venue ready. First. Exactly. What about, what do you think, Sax? I was pretty disappointed. I saw this lineup and I was so excited. It's such a wide range of artists yeah. and it's not too far from home. So I was looking into it, but then I saw on Twitter this morning that it had been canceled. So good thing that no one had bought tickets yet because that would yeah. have been a huge mess to sort out. Exactly, yeah. that would have been bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but lastly is a Hamden News update rather than a Hollywood story. Tonight is our last episode of Hashtag That for the semester. Kayla, Paige, we've all been part of the show for four years and it's definitely bittersweet to say goodbye. Working on the show has made me a better leader. It's pushed me outside of my comfort zone and it's introduced me to some of my best friends. Not to mention it gave me an excuse to go to a pug meetup and a goat yoga class. I'm sure that my college experience would not have been the same without Q30 and specifically everyone involved with Hashtag That. So my question for you two is what has been your favorite Hashtag That memory from the past four years? There is so many to choose from and I, I completely agree with you. Like my college experience would not have been the same if it weren't for Q30 and especially mm. Hashtag. Um, Looking back to freshman year, one of my favorite memories of freshman year was when Kelly Novak and I, shout out to Kelly Novak, I miss you like crazy. She's definitely watching too. We're I hope you are. I later. hope you're watching, Kelly. But one of my favorite memories is when um, TBT, when we used to have to export the show after we filmed it, mm -hmm. and her and I would sit in the media suite and play Club Penguin, RIP Club Penguin, but we would play it together while we were waiting for the show to export. and. We just went crazy on Club Penguin. It's great you meet your role models too. Like we were yeah. freshmen meeting Kelly. I think she was a senior in Alexa. Yeah. They were also so nice to get to learn from yeah. them. I would say my favorite memory would have to be, I don't know, this is tough. I love doing the red carpets with Matt Fortin. So I'd have to say we do it for Fall Fest. We do them for all the spring concerts we have. So those are definitely a lot of Exactly. And of course, the time we went to Vanity. Yes. That was course. so much fun. A lot, we meet a lot of good people through you do. And you get to do a lot of fun things. Mm -hmm. So Sad it's coming to an end, but happy with all the memories we made. That'll last so. a lifetime for sure. Yes, absolutely. Tags, what's your favorite? And anyone in particular? I mean, the pug package definitely That's stands true. out. Pugs are my favorite Go thing yoga in the world. was fun with us. Yeah. Um, but doing Holiday Hottie has been such a highlight, such oh, a yeah, rewarding experience. <laughs> Who did I think about Holiday Hottie? Yeah. <laughs>
Um, and this, the first show, I remember when I was EP with Kayla um, two years ago, after our first show as EP, it's just like the relief of knowing it's over and knowing you're capable of is something that I will never forget. Yeah. So definitely lots of good memories, but those stand out for me. Absolutely. It's been a good run in the past four it's years. Great run. <laughs> well, thank you, Tags, for joining us. Thank and you guys. when we come back, we finally get to see this secret video that our associate producers have been working on all week, and I think it might be a tear jerk. That's what they've seat. said, so <laughs> don't go anywhere. No. <laughs> Two of our associate producers, well now executive and associate yeah. producer Karina and AJ have been keeping a lot of secrets from us all week. I know. We hope you're as excited as we are to see what they've been working on. So let's take a look. Kayla and Paige, it has been great working with you these past couple months, uh, especially getting more involved in Hashtag, a lot more on air. This has come back from LA, it's so far really high, can't wait to top it. I think the seniors, um, Paige, Kayla, Tags, uh, Matt, you guys have been so supportive um, since my freshman year until now. I really am very grateful that Tags and Kayla just took me under their wing from the start and now I can call them both two of my best friends. Just wanted to wish Amanda, Alex, um, Kayla, Paige, and Matt, the best of luck after college. Matt, what a guy. He, this is hashtag I know, but he's been giving us packages for newscasts just about every week. I uh, can't thank him more for doing that because we always need more packages and he's just so talented. I know that he's going to go very far in life. Working with Amanda this year has been awesome. The holiday hacks have been some of the most fun things I've done in hashtag during my two years here. And all I got to say is, Amanda, I know you're going to do great in whatever you want to do after school and just remember where you came from. And thank you for putting up with me. I know sometimes you want to punch you in the face and you didn't. Um, you guys are all a huge reason why I joined Q30 and stuck with it. From my beginning times at Hashtag with Paige Kayla and becoming an associate producer and learning from you guys, I feel like I've really grown and I'm going to miss you all so much. Um, Amanda, super sweet, super awesome, always there to lend a helping hand. Um, I've had some awesome conversations with her. Um, hashtag has always been a place where I just like myself and being fun and stuff with entertainment news. So I'm really gonna miss you guys and your energy and just everything. So thank you. I miss you guys definitely. Don't be strange. Oh my god! This is for you. This is so much. Give me hugs. Because 
guys. Bring like, an we're in that package. Oh my God. We love you so much. All of you. Thank you for Pops. everything oh you do. God. Not only for the show, but for us in general. Well, we thank wouldn't you trade, so like we much. said, we wouldn't trade these moments for the world. We're so yeah. happy to have you guys taking over yes. the show. We know it's going to do great things. I'm so, I'm so excited to see what you all do next year. You know, don't worry, we might not be here, but I'm still going to be watching. Yeah. So I, by, anytime. Anytime, exactly. Like, if you need a host or someone, I'll just, I'll drive up. I'm not that far. So. Take the trip for a hashtag. Exactly. Seriously, that means so much to us um, yes. to have our show kind of come and talk. It's so sweet of you guys, so we can't yes. thank you enough. Thank you. Hold that was the together. Camera. I didn't I know. Camera. I know. I almost got you. I know. I I know. Got, I almost got you. You, you, you did almost get, get me. Make one of you Which I'm impressed. <laughs> she did almost get me crying. I'll rewatch it tonight and but be crying like a baby. I'll send you guys pictures. We're not. We're not gonna cry on air. Yeah. We don't, right. that, you might yeah. get the views. But Gotta hold it together. Exactly. I just want to say, like, little advice for you guys: that hashtag will become something so special. And it might drive you absolutely insane, mm -hmm. but looking back, you're gonna love every minute of it, and you're not gonna regret an absolute thing. And just remember that it's something very special to produce a show like this, and yeah. you meet like literally some of your best friends and your roommates, and you know, like it's it's crazy that the impact that this organization, especially hashtag, will have on you guys. Sometimes it might get tough, but just keep yeah. pushing through because it's worth it. <laughs> it might get you. tough, let me tell you. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for being yes, so to us. Sadly, that is all the time we have on this last episode of Hashtag That. Be sure to keep up over the summer on our social media accounts, Q30 Entertain on Twitter and Q30 Entertainment on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in each week during this great semester. It's not going to be the same next year, not coming to Hashtag each week. But I know the producing staff and the crew will take this show to absolutely great things. So one last time, I'm Kayla Heavey. All right, I wasn't going to cry, but the <laughs> tears are coming. Uh, I'm Paige Meyer. Good, Good night, night Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. We love you. <laughs>